Algebra 2, 5.7, Factoring and the Principle of Zero Products. We've been doing a lot of factoring lately since video 5.4a. Now, we're going to talk about the principle of zero products, which says a product is zero if and only if at least one of the factors is zero. Now, we taught this back in Algebra 1, so we're going to go over it again with factoring. To use this principle to solve equations, make sure that zero is on one side of the equation and then factor the other side. So here we have 5x plus 1 and x minus 7 equals 0. We set the 5x plus 1 to equal 0, and we set the x minus 7 to equal 0. And we solve for each side using additive inverses. It's going to give us a negative 1 fifth for x or a 7 for x. And we substitute both values into the original equation to see if they're solutions. We did this in Algebra 1 back in video 6.8a. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to factor a polynomial to get it to the point where it's in two parentheses or not, okay? So, for our first one, we've got x squared minus 3x minus 28 equals 0. So, the first thing we're going to do is factor the polynomial. It's not a square. We don't have a square on this side, do we? This is x times x. This is negative 7 times 4 or negative 4 times positive 7, right? And this would be them added together. A negative 7 plus a 4 would get us a negative 3, wouldn't it? So we know it's the negative 7. We put them into parentheses, an x here and an, the other x there. And then we've got our negative 7 and our plus 4. See? Now we have two factors whose product is 0. And by the principle of zero products, one of the factors must be 0. We use additive inverses, and we find out x equals 7, or x equals a negative 4. We plug them into the original equation, and we find out that if it's a 7, it's true, and if it's a negative 4, it's true. So 7 and negative 4 are our solutions. So this is the same thing we learned back in Algebra 1, except now we have to factor that guy first. See? All right, now look at this one. We've got a 5b squared minus 10b. Well, they got a common factor of 5b that we can factor out, don't they? This has got a 5b times b to get that, and this has got a 5b times 2. We put him on the front of the parentheses, and that leaves us a b minus 2 in the parentheses. 5b equals 0, or b minus 2 equals 0. This is going to be a 0 over a 5, which is nothing, so it's a 0, and this is a 2. We plug them into the original equation set to 0, and we see 0 will work, and we can see 2 will work. So 0 and 2 are our solutions. See that? Let's try this one. We've got x squared minus 6x equals a negative 9. Now that's a square, isn't it? So really we've got x times x and 2x times a negative 3 and a negative 3 times a positive 3. That's going to give us our x and our x and our negative 3 and our negative 3. See? We only have to do it once because these are identical. We don't have to do this twice like I did up here with the or. See? They're both the same thing. So we find out that x is equal to 3 and we plug it into the original equation 3 squared minus 6 times 3 and we find out that negative 9 is negative 9. It's true. So x equals 3 is the solution. Okay, so this is the same thing we learned in Algebra 1. All we're doing is now we're factoring the polynomial before we do the principle of zero products. That's all. All right, our next video, 5.8, we're going to translate word problems into factorable equations. I'm going to add this video to the Algebra 2 playlist for studying. I'm going to have the Algebra 1 videos, including 6.8, that talks about principle of zero products in this description, so you can just click on it. And any of the previous videos for this chapter that might be pertinent and might be able to help you, okay? So we're going to go on to 5.8, and I hope this was informative and helpful, and I hope I'll see you in the next video. Bye.